Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and the first video in the series about the FZ82 Panasonic bridge camera. Everyone loves holidays, it's that special time we get to experience something new, whether it's new food, new cultures, new places and most of all it's time spent with the people we really love. Therefore being able to document those memories is very important to everyone, not just photographers. So with this series of videos, I'm going to see if this is the right camera for you, if you're a beginner, or you're just looking to downsize from a DSLR, please click and subscribe to the channel and you'll get the full series of videos. So first, a bit of background about the Panasonic FZ82. The FZ82 is a medium to low price bridge camera from Panasonic positioned under the price of the average entry level DSLR. It offers photographers a step up from their compact camera or mobile device. Packing in 18.1 megapixels and a 60 times optical zoom, the option of 4K video, uh, on paper at least, the camera looks a very capable camera indeed. For the most part, one of the reasons people have a camera is to document their travels, family holidays. So for the first part of this series, we'll start there. One advantage of a fixed lens camera, be it a compact camera or a bridge camera, is the fact that they weigh much less than the DSLR. In addition, you won't be needing any of those heavy additional lenses as the FZ82 comes with a lens that is both a wide angle at 20mm up to a 1200mm equivalent at full zoom. With the majority of holiday destinations being of the sun drenched variety, good clean daytime shots taken with this camera are easy to achieve. I do recommend however that new users do try and get off the auto settings as soon as possible with this camera. Users of DSLR and other bridge cameras will recognise the M, S and A modes on the dial. They are manual, shutter priority and aperture priority. P mode is a programmable auto mode where you can take some control back from the camera and allowing the camera to you look after things like the shutter and aperture whilst you can control the white balance and the ISO. So you can adjust it for, for example, for electric lighting or cloudy days what have you and um, it should give you some better understanding of how the camera works and how to adjust to get the best quality images but enough of that let's get back to why this camera makes a good travel camera the first point about why the fz82 is great travel camera is the lens whatever your requirements the lens on the fz82 should have you covered at 20 millimeters, it's a fantastic wide angle, and that should get great shots of uh, holiday vistas, and also it's great for uh, large groups of people. That long zoom range is also great for capturing the local wildlife. It's also great for family trips to the zoo, where you might want to be able to capture those close-up shots without actually having to get too close to the animals themselves. Should you be a plane spotter, then this camera is also quite good. Uh, I got some quite good shots in Fort Ventura where the planes were coming into land and while there would have been tiny dots on a mobile phone the FZ82 lens could pull them right in. On the beach you'll find that this camera is great for capturing water sports activities such as jet skis, surfers, um, sailing boats, uh, all that type of thing. And I tend to shoot in shutter priority on a burst mode, so you can guarantee pretty much you can capture the more motion and the shots that you want. However, you can actually use 4K photo, which is basically the camera takes a section of video and you can then afterwards select which particular individual stills you want to take from that section of video. Um, which is good, quite handy. It does lower the resolution slightly. Too. Generally, the FZ82 is a good all-round camera, which makes a reasonable stab at those wanting to replace the DSLR in order to save weight. Additionally, if you are a mobile phone user, 
and you're wanting to capture more than you currently can then this camera is quite a good option for you so we've talked about what the benefits are of the FZ82 as a travel camera so what are the negatives well the first one I can think of the mains charger cable provided with the camera is a bit poor in my opinion um, basically you have to plug the camera into the wall to charge it and um, I don't think that's really how a, a proper camera should be working um, if you're used to a mobile phone then obviously that's going to make perfect sense because that's exactly what you do with your phone however if you've come back down from a DSLR you're going to think well this is not what I'd normally do I'd normally leave my spare battery in the charger and I'd take my camera out and then when I came home I would swap them over again and I'd be good to go straight away or I would charge up two batteries and take them out with me and um, yeah it's not a great option so what I did straight away was to look at uh, an alternative and luckily there are several places you can buy um, a third party charger with usually with one or two spare batteries so it means you've always got a, a bag with you um, with your camera bag camera in there and you've also got two spare batteries to go out so it doesn't matter where you're going um, you're usually able to uh, take your camera and not worry about having to charge it up anywhere you like uh, where you go my second concern with the FZ82 is that of the low light performance at the heart of the FZ82 is a typical uh, 1 over 2.3 of an inch CMOS sensor most bridge cameras have this type of sensor in them um, effectively that's I think a crop factor of 5.6 over a full frame sensor so it's quite a drastic crop this does help keep the size of the camera down as the smaller the sensor is the smaller the lens needs to be um, if I can give you an example an equivalent 1200 millimeter lens on a full frame camera would be approximately um, 16,500 grams in weight and 83 centimeters in length um, and that was the Canon AF 1200 um, 5.645 M lens so you can see why having a small sensor is advantageous but the downside in that is that the performance of the camera drops in low light if you are out shooting at night then you'll notice that the automatic modes in the camera will compensate by increasing the ISO settings this changes the sensitivity of the sensor but in a, by doing that it also creates more noise in the images the third and final point about the FZ82 which I'm not so keen on is that of the optical viewfinder I do find it quite difficult to use partly because I'm a spectacle wearer but also because it isn't quite uh, up to scratch as far as I'm concerned and certainly uh, the more mechanical viewfinders on my DSLR cameras are superior that said if you're a phone user then more often than not you're probably going to be using the screen on the back of the camera and that's a touch screen which is great and helps you navigate through all the menus and also you can use it to pinpoint your focus and things like that so whilst the viewfinder is not great the screen on the back is quite good so to sum up then is the FZ82 a good travel camera well I think so and certainly every time I go on holiday now that's the camera I take and I don't take the DSLRs and several lenses and it saves me a fortune in weight uh, in my hand luggage so yes it's a capable little camera it does really well in bright sunshine so if you're going on a nice sunny holiday this camera will do you proud and the zoom lens fantastic I mean I've taken shots at the various wildlife parks I've been to and come away with great shots I've also taken shots which I'm really really happy with of local wildlife while I'm out there and again it'll do quite a good job um, at the beach or you know on day trips out the type of thing that you do when you go on holiday and also family photos so join me in the next episode 
Um, if you hit the subscribe button and the bell, you'll get notifications when I upload the next video. That's going to be, I think, about wildlife photography. I'm going to show you some of the shots I've taken in holidays and as well as in this country. And you can compare and see how the FZ82 copes with the less favourable light we get in this country. It's often quite dull. And um, yes, it does have an effect on this camera. And uh, I uh, suggest you take that into consideration before you purchase one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.